two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventures, piteous overthrows, do with their death, bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. I do bite my thumb, sir. I do you bite your thumb at us, sir. Is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir. No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes, better, sir. You lie. Draw if you be men! you do what what art thou drawn among these heartless hinds turn thee benvolio look upon my death i do but keep the peace mm, what draw and talk of peace i hate the word as i hate hell all montagues and thee and that the coward <laughs> Quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. On pain of torture, from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet, and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time all the rest depart away, you, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our farther pleasure in this case. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Uh, madam. An hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drive me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of sycamore so early walking did I see your son. Full many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning's dew. Away from light steals home my heavy son, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. See where he comes. So please you, step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. My me, sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love, 
Out. Of love. Out of her favor where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. What fray was here? <sighs> yeah, tell me not, for I've heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love? O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create. O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep that is not what it is. This love feel I that feel no love in this. Does thou not laugh? No, cuz I rather weep. Good-hearted what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Uh. Love is a smoke raised with the fume of sighs, being purged of fire sparkling in lovers' eyes, being vexed, a sea nourished with lovers' tears. <laughs> what is it else? Uh, a madness most discreet, a choking gall, and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cup. Soft, I will go along, and if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I've lost myself. I'm not here, this is not Romeo, he's some other way. Tell me, in sadness, who is that you love? What, shall I groan and tell you? Groan, why no, but sadly, tell me who. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. <laughs> I aimed so near when I supposed you love. A right fair markman, and she is fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest hit. Well, in that hit you miss. <laughs> She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow, she hath Diane's wit. And in strong proof of chastity, well armed. From love's weak, childish bow, she lives uncharmed. Then she hath sworn that she will still live chaste? She hath. <laughs> and in that sparing makes huge waste. She hath forsworn to love. And in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauty. Tis the way to call hers exquisite in question more. These happy masks that kiss fair ladies' brows, <clears throat> being black, put us in mind they hide the fair. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve but as a note where I may read who pass that passing fair? Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. But Montague is bound as well as I in penalty alike. And tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both. And pity tis you've lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying or what I have said before. My child is yet a stranger in the world. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she are happy mothers made. And too soon marred are those so early married. She is the hopeful lady of my earth, but woo her, gentle Paris. Get her heart! <laughs> my will to her consent is but a part, and she agreed within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. <clears throat> this night I hold an old accustomed feast, such as I love, and you are invited one more most welcome to my house. At my poor house, look to behold this night, earth-treading stars that make dark heaven light. <laughs> Such comfort as do lusty young men feel when well-appareled April on the heels of limping winter treads. <laughs> Even such delight among fresh fennel buds. 
<laughs> Shall you this night inherit at my house? At my house, hear all, all see, and like her most, whose merit most shall be. Go, Sierra, trudge about through fair Verona, find those persons out whose names are written there, and to them say, to my house and welcome, <laughs> on their pleasure stay. Come, <laughs> go with me. It taught man one fire, Burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and be hope by backward turning. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plant in leaf is excellent for that. For what, I pray thee? For your broken shin. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped, tormented. Good evening, good fellow. God, you good in. I pray, sir. <laughs> Can you read? I, mine own fortune in my misery. Perhaps you have learned it without book, but I pray, can you read anything you see? I, if I know the letters in the language. Ye say honestly, rest you merry. Stay, fellow, I can read. <laughs> Signor Martino and his wife and daughters. Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my fair niece Rosaline and Livia, Lucio and the lively Helena, a fair assembly, whether should they come? My masters. Indeed, I should have asked thee that before. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great, rich Capulet. And if you be not of the house of Montagues, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. <laughs> Rest you merry. At this same ancient feast of Capulets, sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so loves, mm -hmm. with all the admired beauties of Verona, go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. <laughs> One fairer than my love. Oh, the all-seeing sun. Ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. But you saw her fair, none else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye. <laughs> I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter, call her forth to me. I bade her come. What lamb? What ladybird? Oh, God forbid, where's this girl? What Juliet? How now, who calls? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me, thou's here, our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. <laughs> oh, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake and she was weaned. I never shall forget it of all the days of the year upon that day. For I had then laid wormwood to my dog, sitting in the sun under the dove house wall. My lord and you were then at Mantua. Nay, I do bear a brain. But as I said, yeah, when it did taste the wormwood on the nipple of my dog and felt it bitter, pretty fool to see it tetchy and fall out with the dog. <laughs> Shake, quoth the dove house. T'was no need, I trow, to bid me trudge. And she could have run and waddled all about, for even the day before, she broke her brow. And then my husband, God be with his soul, who was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou comest of age, wilt thou not, Jewel? <laughs> and by my holiday, the pretty wretch left crying and said, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, to see now how a 
jest shall come about. I warrant I should live a thousand years. I never should forget it. Wilt thou not, Jewel, quoth he. And pretty fool, it stinted and said, I... And stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse, say I. Oh, peace I have done. <laughs> ah, God mark thee to his grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once I have my wish. Mary. That, Mary, is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. <laughs> An honor. Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou hadst sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Uh, well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady. <gasps> lady, such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower in faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman this night? You shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of a young Paris face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lineament. See how one another lends content, and what obscured in this fair volume lies. Find written in the margin of his eyes this precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. That book in many's eyes doth share the glory that in gold clasps locks in the golden story. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him, making yourself no less. No less? <laughs> Nay, bigger. Women grow by men. Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris love? I'll look to like if looking liking move. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Madam, the guests are come. I beseech you follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girl. Seek happy nights to happy days. <laughs> Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling being, but heavy. I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead. So stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover, borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I'm too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with his light feathers and so bound. I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it should you burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? Oh. It's too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. Come, every man betake him to his legs. Come, we burn daylight, ho! And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. And why, may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. So did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She's the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomi over men's noses as they lie asleep. <laughs> Her chariot? is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out of mind, the fairy's coachmakers. Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers. Her traces, the smallest spider web. Her collars of the moonshine's watery beams. Her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film. 
Her wagoner, a small grey-coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm, <laughs> pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. <laughs> on courtiers' knees that dream on curtsies straight, or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on fees, or ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream, which off the angry mad with blisters plagues because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. <laughs> Sometime she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, of healths five fathom deep, and then anon drums in his ear, at which he starts, wakes, being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two, and sleeps again. This is that very Mab that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks in foul, sluttish hairs, which, once being untangled, much misfortune bodes. This is the hag when maids lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she! Peace, peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talks of nothing. True, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain begot of nothing but vain fantasy which is as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind, who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north, and being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his side to the dew-dropping south. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars. <laughs> But he that hath the steerage of my course, direct my suit on lusty gentlemen! <laughs> seen the day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. <laughs> Tis gone. Tis gone. Tis gone. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall. Give room and put it, girl. <laughs> that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night, like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows the snowy dove trooping with crows, as yonder lady or her fellow shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers, make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now, forswear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night.
This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What dares the slave come hither covered with an antic face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now by the stock and honor of my kin to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. And now, kinsman, wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Then Romeo is... Tis he, that villain, Romeo. Content thee, gentle cause, let him alone. Abears him like a portly gentleman. And to say truth, Verona brands of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore be patient, take no note of it. It is my will, to which if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns and ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure it. He shall be endured. What good man, boy? I say he shall. Go to. Am I the master here or you? Go to. You'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You make a mutiny among my guests. Why, uncle, to the shame. Go to. Be quiet. Or for shame, I'll make you quiet. Patience, perforce. With willful collar meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting i will withdraw but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall <laughs> If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much. But manly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have saints not lips? And holy palmer's too? I pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Oh then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do, they pray. Grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have touched. Sin from my lips? Oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book, madam. Your mother craves a word with you. <sighs> what is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. Is she a Capulet? Away! Be gone, the sport is at the best. I so I fear, the more is my unrest. Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? The son and heir of old Tiberius. What's he that now is going out of door? Mary, that I think be young Petruchio. What's he that follows here that would not dance? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name, 
is Romeo and the Montague, the only son of your great enemy. <laughs> my only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen, unknown, and known, too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learnt even now of one I danced with all. Juliet! Anon! Anon! Oh, come, let's away. The strangers all have gone. home to bed. He ran this way and leapt this orchard wall called Good Mercutio. Romeo! Humors! Madman! Passion! Lover! <laughs> Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot. Ah, straight leg and quivering thigh and the domains of their adjacent lie that in thy likeness thou appear to us and if he hear thee thou wilt anger him this cannot anger him my invocation is fair and honest in his mistress name i conjure only but to raise up him come <laughs> he hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. <laughs> this field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go then, for tis in vain to seek him here. That means not to be found. Romeo! Good night. <laughs> He jests at scars that never felt a wound. But soft what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. <laughs> uh, it is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. It is not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars, as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would, through the airy region, stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Ah. Oh. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Why me? She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious to this night being o'er my head as is a winged messenger of heaven unto the white, upturned, wandering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy puffing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo. 
<laughs> Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose, by any other word, would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Oh, Romeo, doff thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. <laughs> Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. <laughs> Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus be screamed in night, so stumblest on my counsel? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. I do not Romeo and a Montague. Me the fair maid, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither, tell me, and wherefore the orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings did I overperch these walls. <laughs> For stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do, that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet. And I'm proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak <laughs> to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death proroged wanting of thy love. By whose direction found'st thou out this place? By love that first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel and I lent him eyes. I'm no pilot. Yet wert thou as far as that vast shore, washed with the farthest sea, I should adventure for such merchandise? Uh, thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush but paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form. Fain, fain deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word, yet... If thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. That lovers' perjuries, they say Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinkst I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. <laughs> but else, not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayst think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen. I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess, but that thou overheardst there I was ware of my true love passion. Therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love which the dark night had so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon do I vow the tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon. Hmm. The inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, blessed thy love prove likewise variable. What should I swear by? I do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love... Well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be, or one can say it lightens. Sweet good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. A sweet repose and rest come to thy heart is that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so what? unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it for what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. <sighs> 
And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Juliet! I hear some noise within, beloved you, anon, good nurse! Sweet Montague, be true. Oh. Stay but a little, I will come again. <laughs> oh, blessed, blessed night, I am afeard. Being in night, all this is but a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy vent of love be honorable, thy purpose, marriage. <laughs> Send me word tomorrow, by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the right, and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam? I come anon, but if thou meanst not well, I do beseech thee. Madam? By and by I come to cease thy strife and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times, good night. A thousand times the worse to want thy light. Love goes towards love, as schoolboys from their books. But love from love, towards school with heavy looks. Romeo! <laughs> oh, for a falconer's voice to lure this castle gentle back again. Bondage is hoarse and may not speak aloud. Else would I tear the cave where Echo lies and make her airy tongue more hoarse than mine with repetition of my Romeo. It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ears. Romeo. <laughs> my nice. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? By the hour of nine. I will not fail. <laughs> Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou rememberest. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I loved thy company. And I'll still stand here to have thee still forget forgetting <laughs> any other home but this. Tis almost morning, I would have thee gone. And yet, no further than a wanton's bird, who lets it hop a little from his hand like a poor prisoner and his twisted gyves and with a silken thread plucks it back again. So loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. <laughs> Sweet, so would I. Yet I should kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep well upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. <laughs> Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest. Hence will I to my ghostly sire's close cell, his help to crave, my dear hat to tell. Mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. For nothing so vile that on the earth doth live, but to the earth some special good doth give. Nor aught so good but strained from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice being misapplied and vice sometime by action dignified within the infant rind of this weak flower. Poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelled with that part cheers, each part being tasted, it stays all senses with the heart. Two such opposed kings encamp them still in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Good morrow, father. Bennett, I see tea, what early tongue so sweet saluteth me. Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Or if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true. The sweet arrest was mine. God pardon sin. <laughs> Wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father, no. 
I forgot that name, and that name's Wo. <laughs> well, that's my good son. <laughs> but where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee. Ere thou asketh me again, I have been feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me, that's by me wounded both our remedies within thy help and holy physic lie. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift, riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and all combine save what thou must combine by holy marriage. <laughs> when and where and how we met, we wooed, we made exchange of vow, I'll tell thee as we pass. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis. <laughs> what a change is here is Rosaline that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken. Young men's love that lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. <laughs> Jesus Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. How much salt water thrown away in waste to season love that of it doth not taste. Thou chides me off for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. I pray thee chide me not, her I love now. Doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well thy love did read by rote but could not spell. But come, young waverer, come, go with me. In one respect, I'll thy assistant be, for this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Oh, let us hence. I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow. They stumble that run fast. Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Not to his father's. I spoke with his man. Why, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline torments him so, he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares, being dead. Alas, poor Romeo, he's already dead, stabbed with a white wench's black eye, run through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow boy's butt shaft. <laughs> and is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion, rests his minimum rests, one, two, and the third in your bosom, the very butcher of a silk button, a duelist. A duelist. A gentleman of the very first house, of the first and second cause. Oh, the immortal Posado, the Punto Reverso, the hate. The what? Here comes Romeo! Here comes Romeo! You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Makusho, but my business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain curtsy. Nay, I'm the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Right. Why, then, is my pump well flowered? Now follow me this jest now till thou hast worn out thy pump. Now, when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing solely singular. Oh, single soul jest. Solely singular for the singleness. Oh, come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Switz and spurs, switz and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Why now is not this better than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable. No. Now art thou Romeo. God ye good morrow, gentlemen. And God ye good den, fair gentlewoman. <laughs> is it good den? Tis no less, I tell you, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Oh, out upon you? What a man are you? One gentlewoman that God himself hath made to ma. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you. But young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. <laughs> I'm the youngest of that name for fault of a worse. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient.
ancient lady. <laughs> Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. What she bid me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell ye, if ye should lead her in a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young. And therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman. And very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. Good heart and a faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What will thou tell her, nurse? Thou dost not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall. Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Here is for thy pains. Oh, no, truly, sir, not a penny. Go to, I say, you shall. <laughs> hmm. This afternoon, sir. Well, she shall be there. Now, God in heaven bless thee. <laughs> Fare thee well. <laughs> Clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's herald should be thoughts, which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimble pinion doves draw love. And therefore hath the wind swift Cupid wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours, yet she's not come. Had she affections and warm, youthful blood, she would be as swift in motion as a bull. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. But old folks, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh, God, she comes. Oh, honey, nurse, what news hast thou met with him? Oh, Lord, why looks thou sad? The news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shamest the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones <laughs> ache. What a jaunt have I. I would thou hadst my bones, and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee speak. Good, good, nurse, speak. Yesu, what is? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? <laughs> How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Mm -hmm. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either and I'll stay the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Mm. <laughs> well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's. And for a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. <laughs> He's not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What, have you dined at home? No. Uh. No, but all this did I know before. What says he over marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches. What a head have I? It beats as it would fall in 20 pieces. <laughs> uh. My back. <laughs> Oh, t'other side. <laughs> oh, my back, my back. Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jogging up and down. Faith, I am sorry that thou art not well, sweet, sweet, sweet nurse. Tell me, what says my love? 
Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she's within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest! Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Oh, you're such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to Shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. <laughs> <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> They'll be in scarlet straight at any news. Hie you to church. I must another way to fetch a ladder by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. Ah, I am the drudge and toil in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. <laughs> Go I to dinner. Hi you to the cell. Hi to high fortune, honest nurse. Farewell. So smile the heavens upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen, amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words. Then love devouring death, do what he dare. It is enough, I may but call her mine. These violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die like fire and powder which as they kiss consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in its own deliciousness and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore, love moderately long love doth so too swift arrives as tardy as too slow here comes the lady oh so light a foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting flint a lover may bestride the gossamer that idles on the wanton summer air and yet not fall so light is vanity oh, good even to my ghostly confessor mm. <laughs> romeo shall thank thee daughter for us both as much to him Else is his thanks too much. Ah, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Conceit more rich in matter than in words brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth, but my true love is grown to such excess. I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Come, come with me, and we will make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. the Capulets abroad, and if we meet, we shall not scape a brawl, for now, these hot days, is the mad blood stirring. Thou art like one of these fellows that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me a sword upon the table and says, God send me no need of thee, and by the operation of the second cup, draws it on the drawer, when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, come, thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy, and as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. And what too? Nay, and there were two such, there should be none shortly, for one would kill the other, and thou wilt tutor me from quarreling. By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good in. a word with one of you. 
And but one word with one of us? <laughs> Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. <laughs> you shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Oh. Mercutio! Thou consortest with Romeo. Consort? What, dost thou make us minstrels? Thou make minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make it dead. We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw unto some private place, or reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I'll budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. But I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Mary, go before the field. He'll be your follower. Your worship, in that sense, may call him man. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Boy. This shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw! I do protest. I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Oh, calm, dishonorable, Vile submission! Tibble, you rat catcher! Will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me, huh? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives <laughs> that I mean to make bold withal, and as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword from his pitcher by the ears? Make haste! Lest mine be about your ears ere it be out! <laughs> Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir. Draw Benvolio, beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt Mercutio, the prince expressly hath forbid this bandying in Verona's streets. Hold, Tybalt! Good Mercutio! I am hurt. A plague of both your houses. I'm sped. Is he gone and hath nothing? What? Art thou hurt? Aye, aye, a scratch, a scratch. Mary, tis enough. Where's my pain? <laughs> <laughs> Go, villain, fetch a surgeon. Courage, man. The hurt cannot be much. No, no, it's not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough, twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow, you shall find me a grave man. Why the devil came between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. Take me some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague of both your houses! They've made worms meet of me. I have it, and soundly too. Your houses! This... Gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got this mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt slandered. Tybalt, that an hour hath been my cousin. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Brave Mercutio is dead. That gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds which too untimely here did scorn the earth. This day's black fate on Modades doth depend. This but begins the woe. Others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive in triumph. And Mercutio slain. Our way to heaven, respective lenity. And fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company, that thou, 
or I, or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy that this can sort him here, shout with them heads. This shall determine that. <laughs> 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 Romeo, away, be gone. The citizens are up and Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed. The prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence, be gone, away. Oh, I'm fortune's fool. Why dost thou stay? Which way ran he that killed Mercutio? Tybalt, that murderer, which way ran he? There lies that Tybalt. Officer, go with me. I charge thee in the prince's name away. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? O noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt, my cousin. Oh, my brother's child, prince, as thou art true. For blood of our shed blood of Montague! Benvolio! Who began this bloody fray? Tybalt! Here slain! Whom Romeo's hand did slay! Romeo that spoke him fair, bid him bethink how nice the quarrel was, and urged, with all your high displeasure, all this uttered. With gentle breath, calm look, Knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt, death to peace. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who now the price of his dear blood doth owe? Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence. <gasps> I have an interest in your hate's proceeding. My blood. For your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding, But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine, That you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, Nor tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses, Therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste! Else when he's found, that hour is his last. Ah. Bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. Such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy clothes, curtain, love, performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms untalked of and unseen. Come, night, come, Romeo, come, thou day and night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow on a raven's back. Come, gentle night, come. Loving black browed knight, give me my Romeo, and when I shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. <laughs> and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love but not possessed it, and though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. So tedious is this day. As is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse. Now, nurse, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hand? Oh, where had he? He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. We are undone, lady. We are undone. Alas, the day he's gone. He's killed. He's dead. Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. 
Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? This torture should be roared in dismal hell. Hath Romeo slain himself? I saw the wound. I saw it with mine eyes. God save the mark here on his manly breast. A piteous corse. A bloody piteous corse. Pale, pale as ashes. All bedaubed in blood. All in gore blood. I sued it at the sight. Oh, break my heart, poor bankrupt. Break at once. To prison eyes ne'er look on liberty. Vile earth to earth resign, end motion here, and thou and Romeo press one heavy beer. Oh, Tybalt, Tybalt, the best friend I had. Oh, courteous Tybalt, honest gentleman that ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? My dearest cousin, and my dear lord, then dreadful trumpets sound the general doom for who is living if those two are gone. Tybalt is gone, and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh, God. Did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did. It did. Alas, the day it did. Oh, serpent heart hid with a flowery face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical, despising substance of divinest show, just the opposite to what thou justly seemst, a damned saint, an honorable villain. Was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. There's no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all naught, all dissemblers. Oh, give me some aqua vita. These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blistered be thy tongue for such a wish he was not born to shame. Upon his brow shame is a shame to sit. For tis a throne where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of the universal earth, or what a beast was I to chide at Will him. you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Oh, poor my lord, what tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Back, foolish tears. Back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain. And Tybalt's dead. That would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. Wherefore weep I then? <laughs> Some word there was, worser than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain, but oh, it presses to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banished. That banished, that one word banished, hath slain ten thousand Tybalts. There is no end, no limit, measure bound in that word's death. No words cannot woe sound. Where is my father and my mother nurse? Weeping and wailing over Tybalt's corpse. Wash they his wounds with tears. Mine shall be spent when there's a dry for Romeo's banishment. Nurse, how to my wedding bed. And death, not Romeo, take my maiden head. Hide to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I want well where he is. Harky, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him. He is hid at Lawrence's cell. Oh. Find him. Give this ring to my true knight and bid him come to take his last farewell. <laughs> Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not? 
Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company, I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. <laughs> banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death, do not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls. But purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence, banish yet is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banish yet is death mistermed, calling death banish yet. Thou cuts my head off with a golden axe, and smiles upon the stroke that murders oh, me. O deadly sin, O rude unthankfulness, thy fault, our law calls death, but the kind prince taking thy part hath rushed aside the law, turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing live here, in heaven, and may look on her, but Romeo may not. More validity, more honorable state, more courtship lives in carrion flies than Romeo. They may seize on the wonder of dear Juliet's hand, and steal a mortal blessing from her lips, who even in pure and vestal modesty still blush as thinking their own kiss is sin, but Romeo may not, he is banished. Flies may do this, but I from this must fly. They are free men, and I am banished. And sayest thou yet that exile is not death? Hast thou no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, though near so mean, but banished to kill me with? Banished! Oh, friar, the damned use that word in hell. Howling attends it. How has thou the heart, being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend professed to mangle me with that word banish it? Thou fond madman, hear me a little speak. Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity's sweet milk philosophy to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banish it! Hang up philosophy. Unless philosophy can make a Juliet, displant a town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not, talk no more. Well, then I see that madmen have no ears. How should they when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet, thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt, Murdered, doting like me, and like me, banished. Then mightst thou speak, then mightst thou tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Arise, one knocks. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Who knocks so hard whence come you what your will? Let me come in, and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Oh, holy friar. Oh, tell me, holy friar, where is my lady's lord? Where is Romeo? There on the ground with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress' case, just in her case. Oh, woeful sympathy, piteous predicament. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up. Stand up, stand, and you'll be a man. Spakes thou of Juliet. How is it with her? Doth not she think me an old murderer? Now I have stained the childhood of our joy with blood removed but little from her own. Where is she? And how doth she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled blood? No, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed, and then starts up and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name, shot from the deadly level of a gun, did murder her. As that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, friar, tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I may sack the hateful mansion. Hold thy desperate hand! Art thou a man? Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy wild ax 
likes to know the unreasonable fury of a beast. Unseemly woman and a seeming man and ill be seeming beast and seeming both by my holy order. I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself and slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself? And why railst thou upon thy birth, the heaven and earth? Since birth and heaven and earth all three do meet in thee at once, which thou at once wouldst lose. What roused thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive. For whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead, thou art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law, the threatened death, becomes thy friend and turns it to exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings light upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. Yet like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou poutst upon thy fortune and thy love. Take heed. Take heed. For such time is rubble. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. Go. Get thee to thy love. As was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence and comfort her. And look thou, stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua. Where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage. Reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and oh, call thee back. With twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou went forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse. Commend me to thy lady. Bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. My lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do so. And bid my sweet prepare to jide. Here, sir. A ring she bid me give you, sir. I you make haste, for it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence. Good night. Here stands all your state. You either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua, I'll find out your man. He shall signify from time to time every good hap to you which chances here. Give me that hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. But that a joy past joy calls out on me. Were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. fallen out, sir, so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tibble dearly. So did I. Well, we were born to die. Tis very late. She'll not come down tonight, I promise you. But for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. <laughs> Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she's mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me, nay more, I doubt it not. Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here with my son Paris's love, and bid her mark you me on Wednesday next. But soft, what day is this? Monday, my lord. Monday? Well, Wednesday is too soon. A Thursday, let it be. A Thursday, tell her, she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? We'll keep no great ado, a friend or two. Or hark you, Tybalt being slain so late, it may be thought we held him carelessly, being our kinsmen if we revel much. Therefore, we'll have some half-dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Well, get you gone. A Thursday be it then. 
Go you to Juliet ere you go to bed. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. Light to my chamber. Ho! For me, it is so very late that we may call it early by and by. Good night. Thou be gone. It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn. No nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out. And Jochen Day stands tiptoe on the misty mountaintops and must be gone and live or stay and die. Your light is not daylight, I know it. I, it is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torchbearer and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore stay yet, thou needs not to be gone. Let me be ta'en. Let me be put to death. I am content, so thou will have it so. And say yon grey is not the morning's eye. It is but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. Oh, that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? Let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. My hands be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divideth us. And now be gone, more light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Madam nurse, your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke. Be wary, look about. Then window, let day in and let life out. Farewell. Farewell. One kiss and I'll descend. Art thou gone so love? Lord, I, husband, friend, I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. <laughs> oh, by this count there shall be much in years ere I again behold my Romeo. I will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings love to thee. Oh, thinks thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not. And all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. Oh, God. I have an ill-divining soul, and methinks I see thee now thou art so low as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails, or thou look'st pale. And trust me, love, in my eyes so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. But you... Keep him long, but send him back. <laughs> 
Oh, daughter, are you up? Who is the cold? It is my lady mother. Is she not down so late or up so early when unaccustomed calls procures her hither? Why, how now, Juliet? Oh, madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. What, will thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling lost. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose, but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weeps not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. <laughs> what villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain and he be many miles asunder. God pardon him, I do with all my heart. And yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. That is because the traitor murderer lives. I, madam, from the reach of these my hands, would none but I might venge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it. Fear thou not, then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua, where that same banished runagate doth live, shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company. Then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. Dead is my poor heart for a kinsman vexed. Madam, if you could find out but a man to bear a poison, I would temper it, that Romeo should upon receipt thereof soon sleep in quiet. Though oh, my heart abhors to hear him named, it cannot come to him to wreak the love I bore my cousin upon his body that slaughtered him. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child. One who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor I look not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn, the gallant young and noble gentleman, the county parrot, at St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. And I pray you tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate better than Paris. These are news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. Well, now, wife, have you delivered to her our decree? Aye, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you. Take me with you, wife. How will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count her blessed? Unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bride. I'm not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that tis meant love. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Chopped logic. What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud. Mistress Minion, <laughs> you thank me no thankings. No proud me no prouds, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out, you baggage! Fie, fie, what are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, get thee to church a Thursday, or never after look me in the face. Speak not! Reply not! Do not answer me! My fingers itch. Wife! We scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but this only child, but now I see this one is one too much, and we have a curse in having her. Now, God in heaven bless her! You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so! And why? My lady wisdom, hold your tongue. Good prudence, what's the matter with your gossips? Go. I speak no treason. Oh, God, you go done. May not one speak! Speak! You mumbling fool! Utter your gravity or a gossip's bowl, for here we need it not. You are too hot. God's bread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, time, tide, work, play, alone, in company. Still my care hath been to have her matched. 
And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, fair domains, youthful and nobly lined, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man, and then to have a wretched puling fool. A whining mammoth in a fortune's tender to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But and you'll not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on't, I do not use to jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart advice. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not, hang, oh. beg, Starve! Die in the streets! For by my soul, I'll ne'er acknowledge thee! Is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? No oh, sweet, my mother! Cast me not away! Delay this marriage for a month! A week! Or if you do not make the bridal bed in that dim monument where Tybalt lies! Talk not to me! For I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, God! Oh, nurse, how shall this be prevented? My husband is on earth, my faith in heaven. How shall that faith return again to earth unless that husband sent it me from heaven by leaving earth? Comfort me, counsel me, alack. Alack, that heaven should practice stratagems upon so soft a subject as myself. What sayst thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Oh, some comfort, nurse! Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. And since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a ditch clout to him. An eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. Beshrew my very heart, I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead. Or twere as good he were as living here, and you no use of him. Speaks thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too. Else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. <laughs> Go, tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence Cell, to make confession and to be absolved. <gasps> Mary, I will. <laughs> and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation. O oh, most wicked fiend. Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn? Or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which she hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counselor, thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. Thou to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fails, Myself hath power to die. On Thursday, sir, the time is very short. Well, my father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death. Therefore little have I talked of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, here comes the lady toward my cell. Oh. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. Ah, that may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. <laughs> what must be, shall be. 
That's a certain text. Come you to make confession to this, Father? To answer that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. <laughs> I will confess to you that I love him. So ye, I'm sure that you love me. If I do so, it will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Poor soul. Thy face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Thou wrongst it more than tears with that report. That is no slander, sir, which is a truth. And what I spake, I spake it to my face. Thy face is mine, <laughs> and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now, my lord, we must entreat the time alone. Uh, God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye. Until then, adieu. And keep this holy kiss. <laughs> oh, shut the door. And when thou hast done so, come weep with me past hope, past cure, past help. Oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it on Thursday next, be married to this county. Tell me not, friar, that thou hearst of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. God, join my heart in Romeo, thou our hands. And ere this hand by thee to Romeo sealed shall be the label to another deed, or my true heart with treacherous revolt turn to another, this shall slay them both. Be not so long to speak. I long to die if what thou speak'st speak not of remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent. If rather than to marry County Paris thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then is it likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death? To chide away this shame, which copes with death himself to escape from it, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of any tower, or walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are. Chain me with roaring bears, or hide me nightly in a charnel house, and I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Oh, then. Go home. Be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not the nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou of, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor. For no pulse shall keep its native progress, but surcease, no warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. And as the manner of our country is in thy best robes, uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, gainst thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and Hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua, and this shall free thee from this present shame, if no inconstant toy, nor womanish fear abate thy valor in the acting it. Give me, give me, tell not me of fear. Hold, get you gone. You be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua. With my letters to thy lord. Thou give me strength, and strength shall help before it. Farewell, dear father. What? Is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? Aye, forsooth. Well, he may chance to do some good on her. A peevish, self-willed harlotry it is. 
See where she comes from shrift? With merry look. Now, now, my head strong, where have you been gadding? Where I have learnt me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests. And I'm enjoined by Holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here to beg your pardon. Pardon. I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Send for the county. Go tell him of this. I'll have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. I met the youthful lord at Lawrence's cell and gave him what become at love I might, not stepping over the bounds of modesty. Why, I'm glad on. This is well. Stand up. <laughs> this is as it should be. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? No. Not till Thursday. There is time enough. Go, nurse. Go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. We shall be short in our provision. Tis now near night. Tush! I will stir about, and all things shall be well. I warrant thee, wife. Go thou to Juliet. Help to deck up her. I'll not to bed tonight. Let me alone. I'll play the housewife. <laughs> For this once. <laughs> what ho! <laughs> they are all forth. Well, I will walk myself to County Paris to prepare up him against tomorrow. My heart is wondrous light, since the same wayward girl is so reclaimed. <laughs> Those attires are best. <laughs> but gentle nurse, I pray thee leave me to myself tonight. What? Are you busy, ho? Huh? Need you my help? No, madam. We have called such necessaries as are behoveful for our state tomorrow. So please you let me now be left alone and let the nurse this night sit up with you, as I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast me. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes at the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! Oh, what should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, Vile. What if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead? Lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo, I fear it is. And yet it thinks it should not. How if when I'm laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me, that there's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night together with the terror of the place as in a vault? An ancient receptacle where for this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody Tybalt, yet with green in earth, lies festering in his shroud, where, as they say, at some hours in the night spirits resort, that living mortals hearing them run mad. Oh, look! Mythics, I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo! Stay! Tybalt, stay! Romeo. Romeo. Romeo, here's drink. I drink to thee. Take 
these keys and fetch more spices, nurse. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell have rung. Good faith, tis day. The county will be here with music straight, for so he said he would. I hear him near. Nurse, wife, what ho? What? Nurse, I say. Go wake Juliet, go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste. The bridegroom, he has come already. Make haste, I say. Oh. Mistress! What mistress? Juliet! My lamb? My lady? Fie, oh, you slug bed. Why, love, I say! Madam! Sweetheart? Why, bride? What, not a word? How sound is she asleep? Mm. Ah, I must needs wake her. Madam, madam, madam. <laughs> what dressed and in your clothes and down again. I must needs wake you. Lady. Lady? Lady? Alas! Alas! Help! Help! My lady's dead! Oh, where a day that ever I was born! Some of the oh, my lord, my lady. What noise is here? Oh, lamentable death. What is the matter? Oh, look, look, how oh, heavy day. <laughs> Forth, her lord is come. She's dead. Deceased. She's dead. Alas the day. Alas the day. She's dead. She's <laughs> dead. She's dead. Oh, lamentable day. Oh, 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 my. <laughs> Death that has tamed her hence to make me wail ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. O oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son in law. Death is my heir. My daughter, he hath wedded. I will die and leave him all. Life, living, all is death. Have I long thought to see this morning's face? And doth it give me such a sight as this? Accursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day. Peace, oh, for shame. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Oh, in this love, ye you love your child so ill that you run mad seeing that she's well. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course, and as the custom is, and in her best array, bear her to church. Yes, sir. Go you in, madam, go with him. Go, Sir Paris. Everyone prepare to follow this fair course. <gasps> Unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more. 
by crossing their high will. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead, a strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think, and breathe such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah oh, me, how sweet is love itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona, how now Balthazar, does thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How doth my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well. And nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it from my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars! Thou knowest my lodging, get me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hence tonight! Oh, I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Touch, thou art deceived! Leave me, and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter, get thee gone and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts it dwells. If I remember, this should be the house. What ho! Apothecary! Who calls so loud? Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold. There is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins. That the life-weary taker may fall dead. And that the trunk may be discharged of breath. As violently as hasty powder fired doth hurry from the fatal cannon's wound. Such mortal drugs I have. But Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fears to die? Famine is in thy cheeks. Need and oppression starveth in thy eye. Contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it and take this. Yeah, my poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. Yeah. Put, put this in any liquid thing you will and drink it off. <sighs> and if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poison to men's souls. Doing more murder in this loathsome world than these poor compounds thou mayest not sell. I sell thee poison, thou hast sold me none. Farewell. By food. And get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial, and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave. For there must I use thee. 
Holy Franciscan Friar! Brother! Oh! Oh, this same should be the voice of Friar John. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Or, if his mind be writ, give me his letter. Going to find a barefoot brother out. One of our order to associate me here in the city, visiting the sick, and finding him. The searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bear my letter then to Romeo? Oh, I could not send it. Here it is again. Nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune. The letter was not nice, but full of charge of dear import, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence. <clears throat> get me an iron crow. Bring it straight unto myself. Brother, I will go and bring it thee. Now must I to the monument alone. Within this three hours will fair Juliet wake. <laughs> She'll beshrew me much that Romeo hath had no notice of these accidents, but I'll, I'll write again to Mantua, keep her at my cell, till Romeo come. Poor living corpse, closed in a dead man's tomb. Hold. Take this letter. Early in the morning, see thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me the light. Upon thy life I charge thee, whate'er thou hearst or cease, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in my course, therefore hence be gone. But if thou jealous dost return to pry in what I further shall intend to do, by heaven, I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. And the time and my intents are savage, wild, more fierce and more inexorable far than empty tigers on a roaring sea. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble ye. So shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that. Live and be prosperous and farewell, good fellow. Oh, my love, my wife. Death, that hath sucked the honey of thy breath, hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain, with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh.
Eyes look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips of you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick wearied bark. Here's to my love. Oh, true apothecary, thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, they die. Romeo. Romeo. Oh, pale. Ah, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. Ah, the lady stirs. Oh, comfortable prior! Where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? I hear some noise, lady. Come from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Go, get thee hence, for I will not away. What's here a cup closed in my true love's hand? Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, true. Drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will kiss thy lips. Haply some poison yet doth hang on them to make me die with a restorative. Thy lips are warm. Indeed, boy, which way? Yea, noise. Then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rest and let me die. What misadventure is so early up that calls our persons from our morning rest? Bring forth the parties of suspicion. I am the greatest able to do least. Romeo there dead was husband to that Juliet. And she there dead, that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them. <laughs> and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death Banish the new-made bridegroom from this city for whom, and not for Tybalt Juliet pined. All this I know, and if aught in this miscarry by my fault, then let my life be sacrificed some hour before its time unto the rigor of severest law. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. Oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. 
This is my daughter's jointure. For well, no more can I demand. But I can give thee more. For I will raise her statue in pure gold, that whilst Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As which shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. <laughs> Thank you.